I love this book. It's called The Story of a Seagull and the Cat Who Taught Her to Fly. It's really cute. Chapter one, The North Sea. School of Herring, Portside, the lookout gull announced, and the flock from the Red Sand Lighthouse received the news with shrieks of relief. They had been flying for six hours without a break, and although the pilot gulls had found currents of warm air that made for pleasant gliding above the waves, they needed to renew their strength, and what better for that than a good mess of herring? Sometimes it has pictures, so this... That's the, f the flock of birds, I think. Yeah. They were flying over the mouth of the Elbe River, where it flows into the North Sea. From high above, they saw ships lining up one after the other, like patient and disciplined whales, waiting their turn to swim out to open sea. Once there, the flock would get their bearings and spread out toward all the ports of the planet. Kenga, a female gull with feathers the color of silver, especially liked to observe the ship's flags, for she knew that every one of them represented a way of speaking, of naming the same things with different words. Humans really have hard work of it, Kenga had once commented to a fellow she-gull. Not at all like us, gulls who screech the same the world around. So they only have one, one language. You're right. The most amazing of all is that sometimes they manage to understand one another, her gull friend had squawked. Beyond the shoreline, the landscape turned bright green. Kenga could see an enormous pasture dotted with flocks of sheep, gra ga grazing under the protection of the dikes and the lazy veins of the windmills. Following instructions from the pilot gulls, the flock from Red Sand Lighthouse seized a current of cold air and dived toward the shoal of herrings. Those are uh, fish they're going to go eat. 120 bodies sliced into the water like arrows, and when they came to the surface, each gull had a herring in its bill. Tasty herring, tasty and fat, precisely what they needed to renew their strength before continuing their flight toward Den Helder, where they were to join the flock from the Frisian Islands. According to their flight plan, they would then fly on to Calais in the Strait of Dover and on through the English Channel, where they would be met by flocks from the Bay of the Seine and the Gulf of St. Malo. Then they would fly together till they reached the skies over the Bay of Biscay. By then, there would be a thousand gulls, a swiftly moving silver cloud that would be enlarged by the addition of flocks from Berlin Mir and Il Or Orion, Cape Machalcho, Cape Aljo, and Cape Panas. When all the gulls authorized by the law of the sea and the winds gathered over the Bay of Biscay, the grand convention of the Baltic and North Seas and the Atlantic Ocean would begin. It would be a beautiful time, Kenga thought, as she gulped down her third herring. As they did every year, they would listen to interesting stories, especially the ones told by the gulls from Cape Panas, tireless voyagers who sometimes flew as far as the Canaries or Cape Verde Islands. Female gulls like her would devote themselves to feasting on sardines and squid, while the males prepared nests at the edge of the cliff. There the female gulls would lay their eggs and hatch them safe from any threat. And then, after the chicks lost their down and grew their first real feathers, would come the most beautiful part of the journey, teaching the fledglings to fly in the Bay of Biscay. Kenga ducked her head to catch her fourth herring, and as a result, she didn't hear the squawk of alarm that shattered the air. Danger to port! Emergency takeoff! When Kenga lifted her head from the water, she found herself all alone in the immensity of the ocean. Dong, dong.